In a previous video, we spoke about the menus, the icons, and other features specific to the Excel 2007 ribbon. In this video, we're going to talk more about different aspects that you'll notice within the Excel 2007 screen. I'll go over some named terms or nomenclature, let you know what some of the characteristics or the features of the screen are called. We'll also look at some of the basic navigational features within Excel. In other words, how to move around the screen. Now when you open up a ex new Excel file, uh, that file is also referred to as a workbook. And a workbook consists of a single or multiple worksheets. And we have three sheet tabs here at the lower left named Sheet 1, Sheet 2, and Sheet 3. You can add or remove sheets as you need to. You can even give the sheets specific names. But looking up at the top of the screen in what is called the title bar, you'll see you get a generic file name for that first Excel workbook that you open, and it's called generically Book 1. Likewise, if you were to open up a second file, that would be called Book 2, and a third Excel file, Book 3, so on and so forth, during the same work session. You also see the name of the program, Microsoft Excel. Now these generic Book 1, Book 2, Book 3 file names will remain there only until or unless you choose to save your actual files and assign to them specific and meaningful file names. Now moving on to the screen, looking at the main portion of the screen, it looks like a, a grid or a series of columns assigned letters of the alphabet starting with A, B, C, D, going all the way to the right, all the way to column Z. Once you reach column Z, it starts again with column AA, all the way through AZ, all the way out to column XFD. Now this gives you over 1,600 columns, far more than the 256 columns you were limited to in earlier versions of the Excel program. Likewise, rows are given numbers starting with number 1, going on all the way down to row 1,048,576. That is not a typo. You have over 1,048,000 rows in Excel 2007. Earlier versions, if you ever got down that far, only went as far as row 65,536. So you've got far more rows, far more columns to work with. You might ask, why would I ever need that many rows or columns? Well, here's one way to look at it. Many businesses and large organizations contain or run databases that hold vast amounts of corporate information, perhaps sales data, uh, years and years of data that they frequently need to export or download into Excel for the purposes of manipulation. They can then use the formulas and the functions in Excel to run calculations, to perhaps track past performance, to look for trends, to analyze their data, and so forth. So they would actually need many thousands of rows. It's not hard to export data from a database and have thousands or tens of thousands of rows taken up quite quickly. But frankly, uh, that's something you probably won't need to worry about right off the bat. And if you happen to get down to that very last row, uh, consider yourself that you're probably working a little bit too hard. But uh, the important thing to know is the fact that you've got plenty of space on your spreadsheet to input your data or input your information. Now as I move around the spreadsheet, the body of the spreadsheet, it uh, contains wherever those columns and rows intersect, rectangular cells. You know, Every rectangular item here is referred to as a cell. And when you click on it with your left mouse button, the cell that you have selected becomes your active cell. And you see it has a dark border or outline around it. You'll also notice something that when you click on a cell in a column and a row, that the corresponding column letter 
and row number are highlighted in the shade of orange. And that helps you track where you are in the spreadsheet. And it also will tell you the name of the cell that you have clicked on. Because every cell derives its name from the letter, the number of the row where they intersect. And if you look up at the upper left below your, your Excel ribbon, you'll see what's called the name box. And there you'll see the corresponding name of the cell that you have clicked on. Right now I have F9 selected, which is the cell that exists where column F and row 9 intersect. If I click elsewhere on my spreadsheet, I'll see that the column letter and row number will change to correspond to the cell I have selected. One handy characteristic of that name box is if I click there, I can then type in the column letter and row number that I'd like to navigate to and then hit my enter key. I typed in M17 and as soon as I hit enter, row or, or actually cell M17 actually became selected for me on my screen. That cell name is also considered a cell reference and comes in very handy when you start to use Excel functions and equations. Because when you're involving multiple cells in a calculation, you have to tell the spreadsheet what cells you're including. And that's why you use those column letters and row numbers. All right, now, when I click on a cell within my spreadsheet, there are several ways to navigate or to move along the spreadsheet. Okay, I can easily use the arrows on my keyboard to move you know, to the right, down, to the left, back up again, just by using those arrow keys on my keyboard. Likewise, if I'm entering some data and I hit the Enter key, it will then take me one cell down or one row down in my spreadsheet each time I hit the Enter key. If I hit Tab, it will move me one cell at a time to the right. Let me just go ahead and delete what I've typed in there. We'll, we'll go into more detail regarding data and text entry later on. Okay, so you have the Enter key will move you down one row at a time within the same column. Tab key will move you to the right one column at a time within the same row. By the way, rows are also considered horizontal records, particularly when you get to databases or you're talking about tables. A record is the same thing as a horizontal row of information. Now, if you click on a cell with your left mouse button and you drag or roll your mouse over to the right, you'll notice that a group of adjacent cells will become highlighted and they'll all share a common outline border. The technical term for a selected group of adjacent cells in Excel is a range or a range of cells. Selecting a range of cells is very helpful when you want to apply different formatting options or change the formatting attributes of text or numbers contained within the cells that make up that range. You also have scroll bars. You have a vertical scroll bar on the far right of your screen and a horizontal scroll bar at the bottom right of your screen. These scroll bars let you get further down or further out to the right, up and down, back and forth within your spreadsheet. As the spreadsheet grows, you need uh, an opportunity or a method of getting out to the outer reaches of that spreadsheet. The scroll bars are very helpful in doing so. And as I go further down my spreadsheet, as I watch my vertical scroll bar to the far right, that little slider control gets smaller as I'm going further down because it has a larger area to cover. I can click on that slider, hold my left button in on my mouse, and roll the mouse up, and it will scroll me up in my spreadsheet. Now notice there's a little pop-up there that tells me what row will appear if I were to release my left mouse button. So if I click and scroll up, when it shows me row 26, if I were to release my left mouse button, row 26 becomes the uppermost row. To get all the way to the top, I can scroll all the way to the top 
using that vertical scroll bar and then release my mouse button. You know, likewise, with the horizontal scroll bar, I can scroll to the right, I can scroll to the left. As I get further out to the right, the slider control in that horizontal scroll bar becomes smaller because I've got a larger distance to follow. Something that's pretty helpful, a little shortcut or a tip, is uh, wherever you happen to be in your spreadsheet, say you're way out to the right or very far down, many rows down, if you want to get up to the top of your spreadsheet quickly, if you hold in your control key at the lower left hand side of your keyboard, and if you locate the home key, and you hit the home key with the control key held in, that will take you back to the upper left corner of your spreadsheet, otherwise known as cell A1. Control home. It's a quick way to get to the top of your spreadsheet. Now, looking at the bottom of the screen, we talked about the different sheets, and we'll go into more detail on managing sheets, copying, moving sheets, renaming sheets in another lesson. But below that, where it says ready here, this bar across the bottom is called the status bar. And it comes in very handy because it provides different bits of information at different times depending upon what you're doing in the Excel program. If I go out to the far right, I have a little zoom slider which will allow me to zoom in or zoom out of my spreadsheet. And I can click the plus to zoom in. I can click the minus to zoom out. It gives me a percentage indication of my zoom level. I can also click on that number and say I'd like to view this spreadsheet at 75 percent magnification and then say OK. Or I can click back there and say I'd like to go to 100 percent magnification. OK. Or I can use the slider to zoom in and show me everything up close or to slide it to the left and zoom out and show me proportionately more of my spreadsheet albeit everything is much smaller. So depending upon your vision, how much data you have to look at, and what suits you best, you can use that little zoom control to zoom in or zoom out of your spreadsheet.